certain alternatives. Rather than put you on the spot and ask you to answer the question that um, you probably can't at this point, I guess I would just express some, some concern um, for what I just heard. Um, you know, I've, I've been involved in, in nonprofits. Um, I work for two nonprofits. And one of the things that you learn when you work for nonprofits, whether you're talking to an executive director or a chairman, president, or a board of directors, is there's no such thing as a nonprofit in terms of the way they look at marketing and the way they look at uh, doing what it is they do. They're always, always fundraising, always looking <coughs> for revenue opportunities. And frankly, um, some nonprofits employ people and pay extremely well. Uh, people make good money working for nonprofits. So I'm not personally, I don't dis disagree with anything Councilman Stein said, but I don't know that I have a predisposed bias toward the not-for-profit versus the for-profit. I think what, what, my, what my political constitution would say is that what Susie just said, is this about, the, is, it, is it a service that, that benefits our kids? And is it a unique service that other nonprofits are not providing? And, and it seems to me that that may very well be the case in this particular instance. I don't pretend to have the solution. Um, and at the end of the day, you may walk out of here un unhappy. And, and so I put as an advance for that. Um, but I do want to ex acknowledge your concerns and, and, and express mine that maybe maybe there is a, a, a soft alternative here. Um, maybe there's a 50-50 scenario where we can designate, you know, 25% of the of the resource to to the for-profit provided that it is offering a service that's unique and falls into a particular category. I guess that those are my comments um, for what they're worth. Thanks. Okay, I'm, I'm wondering if we couldn't build an exclusion in for recreational services offered exclusively to youth. I was, was going to say the same thing. Turn your microphone on then. I, I agree with what the mayor just said. Yeah. Step on up to the microphone. And Step up to the microphone, if you would please, and, and uh, st state that. We are that. Um, constantly working to give scholarships to kids. Last year we did an auction, gave scholarships to kids all year, and we're doing a calendar this year to get scholarship money because I don't, I don't want to turn any children away. So, even though we're not nonprofit, we do do a lot of stuff. We did a cartwheel of fun and gave money to the hospital, the kids in the hospital. So we do so much for the youth. And so it's just hard to be put under the same umbrella as all the other businesses. So. Okay, thanks for your comments, and we're, we're trying to strike a balance here. Mr. Clark, do you have anything you wanted to add? Sure. Um, I, I'm presuming that the rationale for the, the old policy was that nonprofits are presumed to have less of an economic basis to do advertising than a, than a for-profit business, and so this was... A, a public opportunity to help promote mm -hmm. nonprofits. Um, that being said, I you know I do appreciate the, her program, um, and and I'm wondering if, but but I also understand the concern that we don't want to let it get way out of hand. So if it's if it's the if it's the council's pleasure that that we do want to. Add youth or some sort of consideration like that. I'd be interested in, in exploring Councilmember Armendaris' concept of a percent uh, usage, in other words, some sort of limitation to it, so that we, some way that we, that the nonprofits always have a space and always have priority. Through, through the chair, Mr. I'm Stein. Right. Now, when I talk about the, the fence, they're always specific events. This isn't an ongoing billboard or advertisement for something either, and that's what I'm gathering here. This is going to be a year-round. Three times a year. See, so this is going to become, and it, it's going to roll around all year round, and these are all put up for, what, about a week before the event, generally? Let me discourage everyone from having a dialogue at this point with well, people that haven't got a microphone. And you want to ask, come up and <laughs> answer Mr. Stein's questions and everyone at home okay, will okay. understand what's going on. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. No, it's no problem. Yeah. So the, the question was how many times a year? Just, just like the a where starts, um, I do um, amazing summer camps and stuff. Just like Junior Lifeguards advertises right for Junior Lifeguard. 
<laughs> and then we have one shelter. And through the chair, how, how many camps are you talking about during the uh, year? We do camps all summer, but we actually were able to get one sign on the fence, and then the lady told me, oops, you weren't supposed to do that. We're letting you do it this one time. So I have it just that says for camps all summer. Mm -hmm. We put it to get the parents thinking about what they're doing for the summer so that we're right up there with the other sports. Because gymnastics is the best sport. So you'd have it up for a week? Uh, yeah, last time they, they charged me $35 to have it hang on for two weeks. That was the what See, they did. But again, it's going to start in May and carry through the summer to the fall, these camps. And then right. you have a fall and We just advertise it in the beginning of summer because that's, when the, that's pretty much when the parents sign their kids up for camps is just right at the beginning of summer, May, Mayish, And then we start classes again after Labor Day. And um, then we have a show coming up in May. Most of these events that we have are one-time gift. Uh, I don't know of any other event that we advertise on it that's more than one time in a year. And so you want to advertise three or four times a year? Is that about right? Probably three. Three, fall, summer, and our big show. Okay, thank you. Thanks. So, again, I'll bring it back. This is more of an advertising thing. And, again, we're, we're starting to go from the private sector to the public sector nonprofit agencies to private agencies and granted it is for the youth uh, but it is for profit and then what about senior citizens that we have programs advertising for health for the senior citizens on their programs like jazzercise or, or uh, the Weight Watchers program health issues where it, it, I'm afraid that we're going to start down a slippery slope here if we start looking at percentages of advertising and again it, it's strictly Profit versus nonprofit, and I don't disagree with uh, Council Member Armadaris. I have some strict beliefs about nonprofits, and that's why I don't contribute to certain nonprofits that have heavy directors that are paid very, very well. Uh, I, I disagree with that. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> of course, that goes without. Uh, but again, this the original intent was for. Nonprofits one time a year to advertise their event so they could do their fundraising at that time. So, anyway, that being said, that's my two cents worth. Okay. <laughs> come on, come on up. We don't usually do this, and I really try to dissuade people from it. But come on up to the microphone, please. We like to have the stages. I know. <laughs> uh, Wayne Jewell, I'm a hi. resident. Uh, hi, resident of Carpinteria for ten years and. Um, Councilman Armendaris was referring to somebody complaining. That was that was me. And I uh, basically I wrote an uh, article about the signs. I emailed it to all the members of the board as well as the city council. Submitted it to the Coastal View last year, uh, June, and they published um, published the article in the views section of the of the Coastal View. And I brought a copy of it if if you'd, you'd like, because you know some people don't read their email. But anyway, um, referring to the definition of who's doing what on the signs, uh, on the fence, um, I think if you look at them, it's more than just a special event. They're, you know, advertising um, uh, football uh, for, uh, I guess, the boys' club. Uh, girls think advertising their program in general. It's not just a special event like the Avocado Festival. It's more advertising, <clears throat> this is our program, come and check it out. Um, and the problem is that it puts people like Susie Wade with Beach Church Gymnastics at a disadvantage because you're not allowing the public to see that that program is available. And so it's, it's just not fair. And I, I certainly can understand that you don't want to open Pandora's box and start letting everybody advertise on the fence, uh, Joe's Plumbing, etc. But my recommendation in this letter was let's like keep it to children's events because that's pretty much the theme that's on there right now. I think the only thing I've seen on there that's not children's event is uh, English classes, learn to speak English. And that, that's a great idea too, but I think that you could work out a compromise where, you know, if it's a benefit to the community, the children's community, then let's let everybody make 